you obviously focus a lot on story. Uh, what makes a good story in your opinion? Well, uh, what makes a good story is, is the reader or the audience not being able to forget the story. I mean, that's the ultimate test of a great story, I think, and uh, that it really changes their lives in some way. It either it really entertains them or it, it teaches them or shows them something memorable mm-hmm. that they have a hard time forgetting. To me, that's the main, you know, the main uh, symptom of a good story. Now, is that focusing more on plot, on, you know, the structure? Is that talking about character or is it a combination? Like, what are some of the elements of you know, a good it, story? It's a combination, but the, but the primary thing is character. Okay. You know, creating an unforgettable character, um, one of the signs of that is that, that people will start telling you things about the story that didn't even happen in the story because they 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 got the character so well that they you know imagine the character in other settings so i think the number one important thing is a good character what we call the protagonist mm-hmm. who is the first actor in the story and who uh, makes the story happen uh, based on a need of theirs and then has to go out and somehow battle against an antagonist you know obstacles to that need and accomplish it or uh, tragically not being able to accomplish it by the end of the story. In your opinion, what does make a good, uh, a good uh, protagonist? Well, generally speaking, it's, it's a flawed human being. It's somebody that we can immediately relate to because of uh, some problem that they're having. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my favorite examples is lethal weapon, yeah. uh, you know, Riggs. Mel Gibson being a homicidal you know, homicide detectives and a suicidal homicide detective. That's kind of hard to forget. Um, so in the, one of the opening scenes, he's actually playing Russian roulette um, as he wakes up in the morning and, and swigs a cold beer and then, you know, puts the gun to his head. Uh, but, it, you know, he, he's, he survives that day and goes on to another day. But you immediately can't forget him. He, a guy who goes out and does his duty, um, despite the fact that he wants to kill himself uh, because his wife had been recently killed, et cetera. Uh, so, I mean, it, there are all kinds of memorable characters like Rain Man and, mm-hmm. um, you know, Silver Linings Playbook. You, you, you just go from one to the other, but it's usually the characters that you remember. Yeah, I never, I mean, there are obviously very good plots. You know, I remember, you know, Usual Suspects being, you know, has, the the plot was so amazing. But generally speaking, it is character that drives, like, that's what you really connect to, because they're the human beings that you're connecting to. That's something you can actually hold on to, correct? Right. And and one of the observations that you have in the, in the film business is that the character is great. The plot is replaceable. So mm-hmm. that, that's what leads you. I, I, I specialize recently in selling book lines, line, you know, books that my clients have written, several on the same characters and making them into series. So we're heavily involved in setting up series. And what buyers in Hollywood are trying to buy is they're trying to buy the characters. You know, they, they yeah. buy the characters and they can go on making movies or episodes about those characters without reference to the plots that the original author came up with. Sometimes they use this plot. Sometimes the writers, you know, the television writers or the film writers just make up their own plots to go with that character. Are you, are you, um, when you're consulting your clients now, are you recommending that they, if you're writing a book, let's say that you're, you're not just writing one book that you're writing series of books based off the same character, kind of like a Sherlock Holmes or, you know, or, you know, uh, Jack Ryan or something like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I end up doing that because I, I kind of the ultimate home run from a financial point of view for a writer is to sell a television series. Um, and, and so one of my writers <clears throat> took the train in to see me the other day and we sat there at lunch and he'd done, he'd done two novels already that were pretty good. And I told him he should start thinking about you know, writing another novel using the same character. And uh, I did that a couple of years ago with another writer, Texan, and uh, he's now written three books with the same character that caught my attention. And I, I took it out to a pitch meeting with the major producer a few weeks ago, and I, I could pitch it in two sentences. And the minute he heard about the character, he said, that's an obvious series. Let's let's do it. So we're partnered on on the series just because he heard 
about the character and the world the character finds himself in. So th that's obviously a, a good reason to write more than one novel on the same character, not to mention the fact that you're much more likely to sell multiple copies of your novel if you have several other novels that somebody can read with the same character. Yeah, I, I, I recently uh, got, I was I recently found a show called Bosch, which is uh, based on Michael Conley's uh, series of books. My right. God, it's so well done. So well Isn't written. It? And the character is, he's such an interest. the Bosch character is so interesting because he's, he's a flawed human being. But yet he's not Indiana Jones. He's not Sherlock Holmes. He's not superhuman by any stretch. But yet you're just drawn in. And obviously it's the actor, but the character itself and the world that they that, that Michael created, it is fascinating. And I'm seeing that because of all the streaming series and there's so much opportunity for filmmakers and for and for writers out there now. Uh, I mean, we are pretty much in the, a gold rush of story at this time. Yeah. Would you agree? Absolutely. I mean, look at Breaking Bad and oh, and, and and Luther and uh, you know the, the the Escape from Connemara, mm -hmm. you know, limited series. But it's the characters that that draw you into it. Um, you know, the the plot isn't that important. I mean, if you think about Bosch, like how many plots can you remember right away? Um, it's it, it hard takes to me. Remember it the takes plot. me a minute. It takes me a minute to to rem I like. I have to go back. I season one, he had to do this. Season three, he had to do that. But it's Bosch. It's like Indiana Jones. Like you know, you, you you know, it's 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 James Bond. Like how you know how many plots of James Bond do you remember? But boy, you remember James Bond pretty clearly. Yeah, exactly. And and sometimes to show how how the plot is harder to remember, they'll put the plot in the title. You mm -hmm. know, the Temple of Dune or Raiders <laughs> of the Lost Ark, just in case you you forget, because you're not going to forget Indiana Jones mm -hmm. or James Bond. So you they you know call his books after his villains because they're the ones you have to think about to remember goldfinger and you know uh, dr no etc right 